This session is about um, pain that I've been suffering for many years. So at least you will help us as a, a therapy group. So basically the idea is when was the last time that you attended the session that you thought that was really cool and then two months on the line, you don't remember anything. When was the last time you read a book? Six months later, you don't remember anything. Oh, you, yeah, you remember the title of the book and the name of the author. Because in, in case anybody asks you, you can say, oh, that's an excellent book, you should read it. Yeah, but what is it about? Uh, I don't remember, but you should read it because it's a good book. Same happened with videos, same happened with uh, posts um, when we're attending conferences. It's all the same. It's this, this feeling of how come we go to places where we would like to get information and we consume information, but we don't learn much or we learn much less than what we would love to learn. And uh, this is something that uh, I've been wondering about for, for several years now, because I had to know some stuff. Um, my, my role was presenting of, of front of, in front of VPs and presidents for big, big companies. So I, need, I needed to know my stuff. And then I came across this definition of what is learning. And the basic understanding is learning is about the ability to acquire knowledge through study or experience which is great. But what about if we don't do the second part of the definition, which is learning is about fixing it to memory. If we are not fixing something to memory, we are not able to learn. Or we get misled that we consume some of it, and then later on, we can recognize that somewhere, but we cannot use it to our advantage. So we are in the knowledge economy. More and more, whatever knowledge we have, whatever knowledge we can use that we have in our head to combine different concepts to create something new, creativity is more and more meaningful. And from that perspective, that's where I started about six, seven years ago to approach, how can I learn different? How can I learn faster? And basically the first thing that I came across is what are the different ways to consume content and which one is more effective? I'm mostly talking here about something called explicit knowledge. There are two types of knowledge. One of them is explicit knowledge. The other one is tacit knowledge. Explicit has to do with something that can be learned. It can be passed upon. It can be encoded in the book, in a document, or anywhere. Tacit is that more of the hands-on experience. Have you done that before or not? Can you do something and somebody else will help you facilitate that? So when we're talking about learning, usually we all say, try to do it hands-on. Yeah, okay, that's right. But most of the books we, we have at home have to do with read about it, try to put this as part of your minds and think differently using this new knowledge. So while I see a lot of value in the tacit hands-on knowledge, I also see value in the explicit knowledge. And then explicit knowledge usually comes from different ways. It comes from reading something, from attending a conference, from video, audio, etc. So just to simplify, let's see if uh, we can only do either reading or watching a video. Which one's the best, would you say? Who, who would say, raise your hand, reading is better? Raise your hand. Okay. Who would say, I can see Jose not lowering that. Who could say video is better? Ah, okay. So it turns out it works for two different things. So one of them is uh, deep uh, learning. It's about thinking about it, going through this over and over, being able to go back and think about it again, etc. And the other one is more like fast. Uh, you had more senses paying attention to that. You're consuming more information. So with video, you're, you're consuming faster. That's why it helps you a great deal to get a general grasp of what's going on. While with uh, reading, uh, you get deeper and you have time to think about what you're, what you're trying to learn. But what if we could combine both and get the best of both worlds, the best of getting faster access to knowledge and also getting the ability to being closer to it and to thinking about it. So 
This is what I was trying to do over and over. I was getting so frustrated into attending conferences and saying, I don't remember much about it. Or asking, okay, what are the best books on strategy? Somebody listing them and me like, okay, so there are 10 books from 10 different authors. Which one should I start reading first? And if you attend any of the Kanban sessions, they usually talk about WIP. <laughs> There's a limited number of books you want to read in parallel so that you don't get overwhelmed by too much information. So the approach is, aha, uh -huh, so I'm going to read this 300 page book, which is going to take me between six and eight hours. And then once I finish this one, I'll read the next one. Okay, but turn around. How much are you remembering from the book you just read? One question I was wondering was, uh, I made it a formula for that, which was learning efficiency, which is from the amount of time you spent reading something, how much can you remember six months down the line? But remember, I mean, being able to use it right now in front of you as part of a conversation. And in general terms, not much. So uh, the approach here is, wait a minute, lately, more and more, authors talk about um, their books very much. They attend or they present in TED Talks, they go to Google Talks, Harvard Business Review, these kind of things. Ha, huh. so what about we use some mental model called signal, signal versus noise, which is very similar to this Pareto kind of approach. And instead of reading the whole book, and going through it over and over by highlighting it. What about we let the author decide what are the most relevant pieces in the book? What are the most relevant pieces from their work that by the way, they directly curated for you and they articulated nicely in the TED talk. What about if we learn from there first? Wouldn't it, more, wouldn't it be more cost efficient? The amount of time we would dedicate to learn from that book, from that from that session, would leave a space to learn from different approaches from different people towards the same specific topic. And that was that was the goal that I was having all the time. How can I, instead of going through the book and go through it and end to end, what about I capture the right information from videos? because this way I get the best of videos, more information per unit of time. And then I can, by capturing it and putting it in a system, I can try to learn and try to think about it and go through it over and over. So the question was evolving into how can I quickly capture the nuggets of knowledge? I call them micro concepts that are most relevant to me from a particular video. In other words, instead of consuming a video, what about curating and capturing the right pieces of knowledge from your video and putting them in a system of learning? That's what I've been doing for the last five, five plus years. And I've been growing a more and more and more uh, vast amount of micro concepts that I was able to combine over and over to better use as part of my conversations and as part of my learning. Let me very quickly show you how we can do that so that you can get a, a general understanding of what I mean by that. So there's some there's a tool called AnkiDroid and there's a tool called Anki. Let me share the screen real quick so that you, you can see what I mean by that. Let me know when you can see the screen. Can you see the screen? Yeah? No. Not no, yet. not yet. No. Okay. No, because I'm not sharing it. Haha. <laughs> but now I'm sharing. Yes. Can you see the screen now? Excellent. Yes. So let's, uh, this is just a tool, free tool called Anki. It's used for learning languages when you put, um, you, you create something and you put in one part front and then the back, that's the other part of the of the word that you want to try to learn the language in the new language. So what I was doing was evolving this and putting the URL and the minute and the second where somebody is saying something interesting in that URL. So let's just imagine for a second that, I don't know, any random person, maybe Jose. Jose is talking in his um, Kanban presentation 
and he's talking about many interesting very, things. Very, very powerful guy. But can you see him talking? Can you hear so him? We have all these three there. Excellent. Ah, now, okay. So he talks about the arrival rate, delivery rate, and, and all that stuff. And at some point, one of them, I said, oh, we have okay. Now he talks work. about three possible CFD patterns. Now, this is what I do. I click a combination and say, what are the, oh, sorry, what are the three CFD patterns? And then in back, I will forget about that. I create a card and boom, magically, it creates a card. I will show you how that card works. So I continue watching the video. I spent like five, seven, 10, 15 seconds in doing that. And later on, he talks about something even more useful. Let me find where he says something useful in the whole talk. No, I'm just kidding. Ah, okay. So which option is better for predictability? So again, which option is better for predictability? As you can see, I'm, I'm, I'm doing something called quick capture. I'm spending little to no time capturing this is the right moment in time where uh, somebody is talking about something which is meaningful. And what I do next is, guess what? I created a deck, which is called Lean Agile Global, and I can start to learn this stuff. What are the three CFD patterns? Well, I don't remember. So what happens if I don't remember? I click on the link and it nicely takes me to that video, to that specific moment in time where Jose very nicely starts explaining what are the three possible CFD patterns. So in general terms, if you're able to slowly listen to videos and not spend time trying to digest the information and that's it, but rather curate and extract what is meaningful for you. And I'm specifically saying for you because it might differ from person to person, then you can more and more learn what's, what's meaningful and you're putting it as part of your day-to-day. -day. Now, this would be a basic, what's called space re repetition mechanism. It would be a way to slowly go through that content again, try to learn about it again, etc. It's about remembering, right? Well, if you keep it at the remember level, then the, the cognitive complexity that you're applying is very low. Uh, that was one of my biggest mistakes when I was trying to learn key concepts from key people. I was, I was watching lots of uh, Jose's videos. I was watching, it was Jose, uh, Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, pretty much these three, right? So I was, I was getting, getting concepts from each of them. And when I was in front of presidents, I wanted to use that, but I could only remember that. So I could only uh, regurgitate that or parrot that, and that wasn't helping. So I needed to elevate the level and, and start to think, ah, okay. So now that I have this information, let me think, <laughs> who are Bill Gates and Steve Jobs? I am wondering as well. So um, let me try to get the information and try to make it uh, uh, some levels higher. And then I encountered something called Bloom's taxonomy. Is anybody familiar with Bloom's taxonomy? Let me share it real quick. Now we'll make sure that I, I do share. So Bloom's taxonomy comes with this idea that when we are preparing a presentation or anything, uh, we want to, people to know what are the learning outcomes. And learning outcomes are very different if people can just remember something that if if they can understand, so they can explain these concepts, if they can apply this information in new situations, if they can compare, break down this concept and analyze it, analyze it, if they can compare multiple concepts and identify which one is better, which is more of the evaluate. And finally, if they can come up with something new based on that initial concept. So I was putting some more emphasis in here and using the same idea is instead of trying to answer what are the three patterns and then clicking on the link, etc., or which option is better for predictability, I would have this, aha, uh -huh, so please get me to a different level of complexity than just remembering it. And then level of complexity might be 
How would you criticize this concept? That's more of evaluate. So you can only criticize something once you know it. If, um, I don't know, you, you, you don't know this one. And then another question, can you please tell me a personal story related to this concept? So then I would need to think, okay, so how can I relate the three CFD patterns that Jose is talking about to a personal story? The fact that I was going over and over all these concepts and thinking about, can you tell me a personal story? How would you summarize this concept in, uh, in just a sentence? Can, how would you explain it to a child? This is over and over trying to access this piece of knowledge from very different angles which is more elaborate than what we're doing by reading. By reading, we're trying to make sense of it, but we're not trying to go one step beyond. So this is what I was applying for Bloom's Taxonomy. Now, the way this works is by using something called space repetition. Anyone familiar with the concept of space repetition? Yeah. So space repetition is this idea that in 1885, um, one psychologist, German psychologist called Hermann Ebbinghaus came up with something uh, that he named the forgetting curve. So that is, how long does it take from the moment we are learning something till the moment we forget half of it or almost all of it? And it turns out that unfortunately we as human beings, <laughs> we are not very good at remembering. So that's what happens many times when we attend um, sessions and all that. And yeah, I, I'm being certified on this. Yeah. So what? So can you can you remember the content? I cannot. So this idea of space repetition is, aha, uh -huh. so as you start to forget, if you get exposed to the content again and you try to learn again uh, about it again, then boom, you go back to 100% knowledge. Then you start to forget a little bit. It goes a little bit. Uh, slower then you get exposed to the content again. So what this allows you is if you have 100 units of knowledge, imagine in terms of words for a new language you're trying to learn. Okay, it might be that for me, horse, caballo in Spanish, that's an easy one, but the house, casa is difficult. So do I want to have the same exposure to both words? No, I don't. I want to have more exposure to the words that are harder for me to remember than to the words that are easier for me to remember. So the same applies, applies to concepts. I want to have more exposure to concepts that are harder to grasp for me than concepts that are easy than I got them on the first attempt. So the two, by far, the two biggest tools to learn faster, according to one super known uh, person in this matter who's called Barbara Oakley in, in her video learning how to learn is space repetition, which is this idea of being exposed to knowledge. And as you start to forget about it, you get exposed again. And the second one is active recall. So it's not about, I just stay idle and uh, I look at something and then it's like, uh, I look at the answer and say, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I know that. No, you do not know that you can recognize that, which is very different. Now, think about something you believe you know, and then they ask you to explain it. And then you just realize, ah, okay, <laughs> I didn't know it that much. So the idea is, how can we use evidence-based evidence -based learning techniques, which is space repetition and active recall to achieve learning in the most efficient way? And the last thing I would like to offer to you is, how can we integrate the learning as part of the day-to-day -day habits? I read a book. I was fascinated by that book. If you haven't, don't read the book, but just watch uh, the summary from the author. <laughs> so the book is um, Atomic Habits from one guy called James Clear. It's an excellent book on how to integrate habits as part of your day-to-day -day life. And my approach was, Okay, so if I need to be in front of my computer to capture new information, and then only when I'm in front of my computer, I can remember it, that's not good enough. So how can I best leverage this idea of connecting habits to my daily routines? And for example, if we can integrate this tool to 
the phone. In my case, you cannot see it because I have the background, sorry about that. But in my case, every time that I'm unlocking the phone, it opens up with one of the two questions we just had. And then it asks me, I click on it and said, what are the three CFD patterns? And then I can see immediately on my phone the video from Jose exactly at that moment in time that I can use to better remember that concept. So we unlock the phone between 50 and 100 times a day. Imagine if you could pay a small, tiny tax of just remembering one of the concepts that you previously have decided that is really valuable for you every time that you're unplugging the phone. And with all that, I rest my case. I'm, I'm here for any questions from anybody. Feel free to unmute yourselves if, you, if sure, you're on side, or you can put your questions in the chat as well, whatever works for you. Thank you, Sohair. Let me ask you a question, which is interesting. I, I love the, the whole concept of how you're doing this. Um, do you feel that occasionally you might miss something by not um, spending the time reading a whole book or things like that? I mean, is, is, there, a, is there a potential, I don't want to put any judgment, is there a potential side effect to counterbalance to this? Mm -hmm. Yes, the side effect usually is you end up with the highlights. That's mm -hmm. good and bad. So the good thing is in the six hours, it would take anybody to read the 300 page book, assuming you're reading at the 450 words per minute. Yeah, yeah. In those six hours, I can watch 10 TED Talks from the 10 best known authors on that matter and get the grasp of 10 different perspectives on the same thing. So my knowledge will be much more diverse and I will have time to rehearse it and try to practice it and, and ask myself questions. So I will be able to link all those pieces of knowledge. Now, the drawback is I don't know that book that deeply. And, and that's something I was actively deciding to pay off. I didn't want to read one book. It, it's this signal versus noise mental model. Every author wants to write, same as with movies. You want to write a book, you want to uh, put a movie that yes, makes sense, but there are some um, hypes in the movies and there are some moments that like, okay, can I fast forward it? I, I deliberately was going to the highlights. That's the point. Uh, one thing that you just made me think about saying that as well is many times many books are like about how thick they are and the real values, the ones that are really, really thin, that the yes. summary has already been done. Rather yes. than, hey, I wrote a hundred thousand words. Look how awesome. <laughs> yes, and what's, this is what uh, authors have to do anyway. Mm -hmm. So they're doing a great job summarizing their books mm -hmm. uh, because they know they have this limited amount of time and they want to deliver the most value per unit of time. Mm -hmm. All I'm doing is instead of going to, to the source, I'm going to this condensed summarized part uh, of the book that they, they just created for me. They have done the selection for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Any more comments, questions? We still have five minutes. I have a question. Sure. What, uh, what, what are your thoughts on those higher levels of the Bloom's taxonomy? So you talked about just remembering things and then being able to maybe recite things, but what about the higher levels? What are your thoughts mm. on that? Mm. Yes, my, my thoughts are usually the Bloom's taxonomy is being broken down in, in lower order thinking skills and higher order thinking skills. Lower order thinking that they are the easy ones. Remember, understand, apply. You can apply uh, something without remembering it or without understanding it, like a um, recipe from, from the kitchen. But higher order thinking skills, there that's where the magic happens. And, and for me, the huge change is I don't want to be good at remembering things and being able to verbatim reproduce on the spot how Bill Gates would say something. No, 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 no. What I want to use is that time and going through that concept over and over and think, ah, okay, how can I summarize it? 
uh, how that, that's um, that's a technique um, called Feynman technique. Teach it to a child, review, organize, and simplify, and transmit. So you need to go several levels above if, if you want to do that. So for analyze, evaluate, but especially for create. My my what I've been finding over and over as part of my my job, which is presenting to executives about Agile and, and running Agile transformations, maybe as, as some of you as well. Well, I, I just realized that I can combine concepts much, much faster and much, much easily because that's what I do on a day-to-day -day between 50 and 100 times every day. So that's about creating. Creativity has to do with coming up with something new by creating something new or by combining existing content that uh, creates something new. So. Uh, more and more, uh, the, uh, the messages and the conversations that I'm spreading are new because I'm basically combining existing messages that only I am living because only I am watching these videos or somebody else is watching something else. It depends on the sources what, what you're looking for. But uh, once you learn to combine that and to extract the right pieces of information, I mean, this is, this is really powerful. <laughs> I hope I answered the question. Any other questions? I have a question. Sure. Um, so I would choose different learning methods depending on the type of thing that I'm wanting to learn. Hmm. So I was just wondering kind of what kind of, is there a distinction of what you would use this learning method to learn and stuff you wouldn't use it to learn? Uh, there, is, there is indeed. Um, there are many times in Agile, what, what we, I'm, I'm just focusing on Agile because that's that's the background that I have, but many times you, you need to be able to better interact with people. You need to be able to uh, speak in public to resolve conflicts and, and deal with uh, uh, assertivity and, and these sort of things. Well, for that, this method is, I wouldn't say that useful. It, it, it's just a reminder like, okay, how would you say this phrase in a more assertive way? Well, thank you, you learned that, but how many times do I need to go through that to, to remember that? What I really makes a huge difference is for what I, what it, I don't call it, it, it's being called explicit knowledge. Explicit, this idea of being able to reproduce that. Because I can imagine, okay, uh, so I'm going to, new sector, completely um, unknown to me. I want to learn about the sector. I want to know how they run the strategy, etc. So I can go and grasp five to 10 videos and in four or five hours, get the 10, 15 most valuable concepts, learn them, practice them, interact with them. And then I attend to a meeting and then I talk the same language that they talk and they, they usually get impressed with because of this. Yeah. I've got a question actually. Sure. So for example, the way that you're doing your system with the space, the space repetition and capturing your that's your right. Notes and things like that. Would a would would you would collaborating with other people in doing that help? Or is that something that it needs to be a personal effort? Yes, that's a that's a wonderful question. I've tried both. Um it does help a little, but it's not the big thing. So it does not help if you go and extract the micro concept from that book and I do the same with other book and then we switch. It, it does help a little. What, what happens is you want to extract knowledge from what's relevant to you, from what resonates with you. And then sometimes the concepts you would have, and you can obviously interact with concepts and, and send concepts back and forth between people. But what happens is what others find relevant, I think like, no, that's not relevant to me, either because I know it already or because of it's not relevant, period. So uh, some small percentage uh, can be used. That would not be my suggestion for let's create a community where we just put all our content there. I tried doing that in Twitter and people were very excited, but I, I'm not sure it did work for them. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, Saba, I think we're good, but I'll be 
connecting to Welloy in case anybody wants to follow up on discussions. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.